and welcome back to the Old Timers Show right here on WDKN. And as I mentioned before the break, I've got my good friend, Mr. Tony England, in the studio with me this morning. Tony and I are going to talk a little bit about William James. Uh, I've always wondered about William James. Uh, if you've ever been in White Bluff, you know that there's a school there uh, called the William James School. And uh, it's named after uh, a family, um, the James family. Uh, William James wanted to name the school after his father, and um, the Elizabeth House is there in White Bluff, and so there's a lot of lot of things in White Bluff that have a connection uh, to Colonel William James, and so uh, I'm not really sure a whole lot about him, so I thought, well, if you want to know about White Bluff, the best thing to do is probably contact uh, White Bluff's official town historian. And so um, that's that's Tony's role. He knows a lot about White Bluff. And so, Tony, uh, this morning I want to ask you a little bit about Mr. William James. And uh, you can just sort of tell us, um, just kind of start wherever, and we kind of go from there. But um, let's maybe start at the beginning of William James' life, because okay. I just find the man interesting he is. and fascinating. So, um, Born he's a- in Charlotte, Tennessee. Okay. His mom and daddy owned the big store, post office, and a bank. All combined, and the, and the, the house is still standing. He went to Tracy Academy, and <clears throat> he got to go to West Point due to his great grandfather being in the Revolutionary War. He graduated from West Point in 1872, next to Elias in his class. But he he. he was of course like every rest of him, he was a second lieutenant when he got out, and they sent him straight to uh, Arizona. Now I got all kinds of documents that you see from when his brother would ride him, or other people would ride him, all over the place. Fort Reno, Fort Supply, Fort Grant, blah blah blah. And he was uh, very prominent. While he was in the military, he bought silver mines. New Mexico, Cuba, Arizona. So all over the place. All over. And while he was in Cuba during the uh, Spanish-American War, he opened a refrigeration company. Wow. Got documentation. And he and two more from that area, Mexican, I mean Cuba, went in. And all three of them opened. He made quite a bit of money on it for a while. Then they got this new fangled refrigerator stuff, so he sold out. Ah. But he did that. <clears throat> now, when he retired in 1903, <clears throat> excuse me, he came back to White Bluff, and he told everybody, I was so prim and proper all these years. From the time I was born till I got out in 1903, I was so prim and proper. Now I'm going to do what I want to. And I'm not going to listen to a damn. That's his, I'm not going to listen to a damn person tell me what to do anymore. And he didn't. And yeah, bless his heart, he went around town. He stunk bad. My mom even remembers him very well. Uh, he'd open a can of peaches and eat a slice out of it and put the can up in the door, uh, window sill. Come back days later and eat it again. <laughs> but he he did help White Bluff. Now he was very stingy. He owned almost all of White Bluff. Uh, he was so bad at one time, the night Riders got on to him. And they told him, says, you, you, you're owning too much, and you're not taking care of enough. So they gave him two days to get out of White Bluff. Well, there's going to blow his big belly and his house up. He left and went to Gay Street in Nashville for over a year. Now, who were the right night Riders for people who they, don't know? They were similar to Grellas from Civil War, but they took care of the married women and stuff like that. Uh, they took care of the town. Like overseers of the town, making yes. sure everything goes Yeah, exactly. Because uh, at that time, we had Jared Howell was the sheriff, but you know he had a saloon too and everything. And uh, at one time, they caught the husband of a coming out. He was drunk. And they come out there, so they took him, and they stripped him, tarred him, put him on a cedar post, and took him through the town. Took his money from him and sent it to his wife. Wow. And uh, <laughs> then, of course, they let the guy go, but he was all tarred and feathered. And like, but they, they took care of him, kind of, kind of like the 
the uh, I feel large deal with you. Yeah, like kind of like they're watching out for the less fortunate. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, when they told him that, he he took it to their word. But then I got a letter also for his. It says it's his best friend. <laughs> Every time he goes into the Methodist church, he'll go to the front, and sit down. The front gets up, and goes to the very back, and sits down. So he wrote me a letter, and he said, "You stink." I said, people just can't be around you when you stink, Colonel. I said, you got to take your, uh, go get clean. Yeah. And uh, he said, I don't care how I stink or what. They don't have to like me. <laughs> so, I, so that that's, that was him. But that, you know, I mean, I got the letters that they wrote to him about that, and, and uh, they're not writers. It's very interesting. So, he finally did start selling some stuff off. Now, Miss Ordworth came in here, mm-hmm. and. Her and him got together, and uh, she got the town incorporated. He didn't want to incorporate because he raised more money for him. Oh, okay. Taxes and stuff. Right. But it went ahead and was approved. They got the town incorporated. Then the colonel coming in, and she says, Colonel, why don't you give us some land, and we'll build a, a school, church, and stuff on it, and we'll call it the Elizabeth House in your mama's honor. Yeah. Oh, when she said that, that's all it took. Because he loved his mom and dad. So he did, and they built it. It's called Elizabeth House. Yeah. It stood for, I guess, from 1914, and they tore it down in 1950. That's a long time. Long time. Uh, but it definitely helped a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Kids. No clothes, you know, stuff. And they didn't charge maybe but a penny here or a nickel there, because there's a lot of money still. So what exactly was the Elizabeth House for folks who don't know? It was kind of like an early version of uh, the Help Center or something. Exactly. Uh, you go in there, and they had clothes shipped to them from all over the United States. Other Episcopalian churches or anything would ship them clothing. And then, so they get it, and they'd put it in their, their church or the Elizabeth House. And like I said, they wouldn't charge nothing. And at Christmas time especially, they give people around their clothes, take stuff to the poor house, mm. and give give the women out there shawls and dolls. That's the main thing. You know, you, like a 79 year old lady, and she loved that doll and scratched on it. And they said when she passed away, she still had an arm. Oh, wow. So, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. And the soap. You remember about the yeah. soap? And, uh, but the colonel, he did that for her. He gave them the land to build a school on. Now, everybody said it was named after him, but it's not. I got the deed, and it's named after his daddy. Yes. Who was William James Sr. Okay. It was named after, in honor of his daddy. So you got his daddy had a school built after him. His mom had Elizabeth's house built after her. Okay. So that makes more sense. He was honoring his parents. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. His, his daddy died when he was kind of young. Then his mama died in 1887, so he was older at that time, of course. He had one older brother that was in the Civil War. He was a major, Robert uh, Allen William James. Then he had one brother younger than him, and he never married. He kind of overseen the business when he was off in service. And uh, his brother, older brother, died in the lake of Chattanooga, uh, in the lake of Chicago, uh-huh. He drowned taking a bath. Really? He got a cramp, couldn't get back to the shore. Wow. And that's when they all come, you know, took, took a bath. Yeah. And he, and he drowned, they couldn't get to him in time. And so he's buried up there. And he, like I said, his name was Robert Allen William James. They all had four names. Robert Allen William James, James Henry William James, and Thomas Harden William James. And wow. His other brother. And uh, now his mama, his daddy, and... The brother all buried at the old Charlotte Cemetery, and he he wanted to leave them markers, but he never left the money for the markers, so nobody ever gave them. Oh, really? They so we don't know. Them. They don't know where they buried up sure. Hmm. Now, so, uh, let's see here. He uh, he finally started selling some of the houses. Uh, he owned the only well water pump in the whole town. He would charge him to get, but he finally stopped that. He would rent out a barn so people could bring their mules, the cows, they might get up in there, especially if it could be shipped out. But he made a stipulation that 
as long as they never got the manure. Because <laughs> he got a manure and sold it yeah. for fertilizer. Make money. See, so, I mean, he wasn't a dumb man. He was very smart. But anyway, and uh, there was one woman he was in love with. And he loved this woman. Her name, and I, I, I'm not going to say her name, but he loved this woman. He wanted to marry her. And she sent him a letter saying, I would marry you, but you're so darn set in your ways and, and, and you stink and you don't want to care no more about this, that, and the other. And that was it. Mm. One woman. He loved this one woman, but they never got married. So he adopted his second cousin. Her daddy and the colonel was first cousins. His name was George Williams. His daddy and the colonel's mama was brother sister. Okay. So that's how Miss Ann was kin to him. Okay. And uh, I went over and I interviewed Miss Ann one time. We talked about George and all them. They're, he's buried in Texas and stuff like that. And uh, she said, yeah, I said, said him and, and it's called the colonel. They got along really well. And when he asked him about adopting me, he said, fine. And he, she said, I had solid red hair. So they were talking about reading, uh, doing that and adopting me. And uh the only ones that had anything against that was the his older brother Robert's three kids. And of course they went to court over it all, but he adopted her in Texas and he adopted her in Nashville. He made sure he was legal with all this. Okay, yeah. Double checked it. Exactly. And so uh, when I was interviewing her, I asked about Frank and Jesse James and she kicked me out of the house. Really? Yes. Yeah. She said, I'm not no kin to them. We're not no kin to them. Them two uh, on raised that went out and robbed everybody. That, no, no, we're not no kin to them. Cause find out, of course, they was cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so they actually were related. Yes, but yes. just not. She just wasn't proud of it and didn't want to talk about it. She wasn't proud of it at all. She wasn't mm. proud of it at all. Mm. Just Frankie, Jesse, James. They were coming through White Bluff. Cause they was kin to the Jameses and the Williams, mm-hmm. and they would stay here. Then they'd go on down to Yellow Creek where the Jameses lived. Then they went to Humph- uh, Humphreys County. Out there. I'd always heard uh, maybe in Humphreys County there's some kind of graves there. They have the twins passed. Okay. Uh, Jesse James' wife had twins and they both died. And they buried both of them there at Hutzburg. They both have markers. I'm going to say it's been at least 10 years, maybe more. A gentleman from Missouri came in here and dug up the graves and he just put a load of dirt. And put them in a tote, and it had nails, a little bit, a little bit of cloth. But that was all that was left because it was buried in wood, and there was all there was no bones because you're talking, you know, newborn. Mm-hmm. So he took all the way back up there, but he left the markers and the cemetery fence around it, and, so, and there. Okay. And even though they took, I guess you could say, dug in there, it's they still got remains in there. You know okay. What I'm to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they was they were satisfied with it. Yeah. And they got a big thing up there on the highway that says Jesse James and his wife's kids. And it's it's, all, it's pretty neat. That is that is interesting that they were related. People had asked me that and I wasn't sure. They are definitely restaurants. And uh, Doctor uh, James lived there on Yellow Creek. They definitely related to him. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, sometimes people ask me. They say, you know. Uh, w- w- Colonel James was born in Charlotte, but then he ended up in White Bluff. His yeah. mom was from White Bluff. Oh, okay. So she that's was a Williams. Connection. Okay. The Williams clan was from White Bluff. And that's how he, she owned land here in her name, Sarah, Sarah Williams, Elizabeth Williams. And uh, when she got out of service, she still owned land here, and he got it because, of course, she passed away. And so he got her land. That's why he came to White Bluff. Wow. Okay, that makes so they sense. They did own land in White Bluff, and so uh, I guess that was his start. And then he came down here and just started buying everything. Exactly, up. exactly. And I guess he'd made. I guess he must have made some money while he was in the service. Oh yeah, he made money. He yeah. made money. Uh, he'd he'd request them to send it to the bank, uh, and stuff like that, uh, and they would. I you know at that time. I remember having our documents where they he requested one of them, and it was three hundred dollars. So that's not bad pay for a month, right? For retirement, yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. No, that's that's pretty good. So I guess that's how he sort of 
got going and then oh, definitely and then he was you said he was here for about 30 years uh the the mining business he really hit it well mm. and it, he came in at the right time and uh he was not a dumb man by no means no he uh out there where his wife mama lived out there off of uh Wild bluff road i mean 70 was the original Stage stop. Oh. And they would come in, and, and, and so, but you talking, he was in service then. Mm hmm But that, that's that's where the original stage stop was at. And the remains are still there, and we've metal detected a few times and found some old token here and there, and an old coin, uh, just knives, forks, you know, nothing really, really, really well, but good enough. Yeah. But, uh, and the foundation of it's still there. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now that uh, his grandson, uh, Andrew Jasmine Smith, passed away, he's got two daughters and one son, and all that owns them now. And their daughters said, we're not going to do nothing to that land that stands like it is. It is. When you're coming uh, out of White Bluff going towards Nashville, and you look to the left-hand side of Highway 70, Pretty much all that belongs to them, if I'm not mistaken. All the way down to the Harpeth River. Okay. Now there's they own uh, there's a business or two up on the left, but the woods and everything behind them belong to the colonel. They belong to his mama, or I mean his daughter. They belong to a jazz man. Wow, that's a lot of land too. Yeah, and jazz man, he really was a smart man too. He retired from service and stuff. So he he but he he was born. Two years after the colonel died, so he didn't know. But Miss Ann definitely preached to him about his granddaddy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, you know, with so many things being built in White Bluff right now, people, yes. you know, are kind of getting stressed out about all this infrastructure. It, it just may be comforting for them to know that that land is, there's no plans there's to develop no plans. it or, or sell and, it or and anything. And that's what people, I, I hate growth that bad, but it's progress and we can't do a thing about it. It's hard to stop. You now, can't really do much. You can't go east in White Bluff because you got Cheatham County. You can't go west because you got Montgomery Bell. You got north and south, and you can't go too far south because Burns comes in there. Yep. So the only place you can actually go is north, and then you can't go too far there because you got Cheat Creekwood and all that. Yeah, run into Charlotte eventually. So everything is being built now is in the heart of White Bluff. Mm hmm. Uh, and like I said, there's nothing they can do about it. If I own the land and it's my land and I want to sell it, that's what I'm going to do. Right. And I'm not going to let nobody talk me out of it just because they don't want no growth in White Bluff mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I guess it's grown a lot. <laughs> it has, hasn't it? Yeah. You've, you've, and I guess you've seen a lot of growth yes, over yeah. the years. Taylor Town Rollers, gravel. Uh, of course, 70, there wasn't no interstate at that one time. And yeah. It was Presley and all that. Some of them movie stars and some of the country singers would drive 70 going to the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, sure. No. And uh, my wife's family owned a hotel down at Harpeth River, and they stopped in there some. Really? Know? So it's pretty interesting. But, oh, yeah, before they had the interstate, 70 was the main road. I, 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 remember, you know. I've been fascinated with, uh, you know, the – the fact that Elvis would have had to have come through. Exactly. And so, um, and I've been told some different stories about him maybe being in Dixon, getting a hamburger, stopping at the gas station, using the bathroom, getting yeah. a Coke, stuff like that. Yeah. So he would have had to come through White Bluff, too. Yeah, and, and, and it's like a lot of people knew the name, but he wasn't that big yet. Mm -hmm. You know, Elvis Presley, yeah, he came in here a couple of days ago, but, you know, but now, oh, yeah, his pictures everywhere of him, you know, he come in here several times. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a short break. We'll be right back here on WDKN. 